Hello, uh, it's Dr. Morris again. Been working on a case here of a type 1 uh, who also has a thyroid and parathyroid weakness, seven years old. I've been uh, asked about uh, hypothyroidism. And uh, I want to address that, of course. A uh, very common problem that we have, Hashimoto's. You've got all kinds of thyroid problems out there. You've got people with goiters out there. Uh, and so it's important to understand what's going on there and what you have to do to find a remedy. The remedy allopathically is to simply give you a T4, uh, which is a uh, hormone uh, produced by the uh, thyroid gland. Uh, a synthetic one at that. Some people are taking armor, which is a actually thyroxin, what T4 converts into, and um, and they take the natural thyroxin. The problem with either of these uh, hormones or pre-hormones is the fact that it'll actually make your thyroid weaker. If you understand that the thyroid is part of the endocrine gland system, and when you look at your body, the endocrine glands is the government of your body. Friendly government, not crooked like the one we seem to have right now, but we've got a real friendly government because it realizes it's made from the same thing everybody else is. We're all cells. And if you review the uh, videos on the lymphatic system, it'll really help you to understand uh, the body a little more because the thyroid is just a bunch of cells and two fluids. The adrenal glands, a bunch of cells and two fluids. The kidneys, a bunch of cells and two fluids. The muscles, a bunch of cells and two fluids. The bunch of cells makes up everything. Everything in your body is nothing but cells, no matter what shape or size they take. The two fluids that flow around every cell, it's kind of like Mississippi right now. You got a house stuck in the middle of the river. Well, that's how your cells are. Your cells are stuck in the middle of a river, but this is a river called interstitial fluids. And this river of fluids is 75% lymphatic fluids, which is the sewer fluids, and only 25% blood, which is the kitchen. That feeds the cell, and then the sewer fluids help to clean the waste from cells. So when you look at the endocrine glands, they're the government. They control every process that goes on in the body including the nervous system, which then that controls every process. So it's, it's intricately tied together. But however, these intracranial glands control everything. And they produce hormones, steroids, neurotransmitters, which runs the nervous system, and of course enzymes, like digestive enzymes. The thyroid obviously controls the rate of how fast you digest your foods. Uh, one that has a hyper or a fast-paced thyroid can eat five, six meals a day and not gain a, a, an ounce. Hypothyroid is a slow oxidizer or digester, meaning that you can eat one meal a day and take all day to digest it because your, your metabolism is slow. That controls the heart rate as well. So when your heart rate runs fast, that's your thyroid kicking up your heart rate, either to oxygenate your body or your thyroid's being overstimulated. And it's the opposite. A slow bradycardia or a slow heart rate is a hypothyroid case. Now, this, can, this hypo or hyper condition can exist in any of the endocrine glands. The pituitary, of course, is the main gland. And it controls the thyroid gland by the production of TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. Most people have a lot of pituitary problems, which is not even considered in allopathic lore. They just focus in on the thyroid. The problem with the thyroid, besides the um, rate of metabolism and what uh, uh, thyroxin does, is the calcitonin produced by the thyroid, and of course the thyroid's twin brothers, the parathyroid glands. And the parathyroid gland is located on the back and on top of the thyroid glands. And the thyroid and parathyroid glands job is to control your calcium utilization in your body. Most people don't realize that. So when you see bruising or varicose veins or spider veins or hemorrhoids or brittle nails or prolapsus bladders and uteruses and bowels and skin and, and, and easy to fracture bones, depression, Big time depression, parathyroid weakness, the inability of the body to utilize calcium. 
You can't just take calcium and correct that or you'll give yourself arthritis. You need parathyroid hormones. So when I'm a cell, let's say I'm a cell and you're a thyroid. How do you make me weak? How do I not perform for you? What affects my functional ability as a cell anywhere in your body, but we're talking about the thyroid? Well, the first thing's obvious, genetics. And I'm going to shoot another video here on genetics, and this is particularly aimed at the younger folk and what serious problems you guys are facing because we didn't have the awareness to rebuild our cells before we passed our weaknesses to you. So big time problems in, in young people today and I need to address that so you guys know how to get yourselves out of trouble. I tried to touch that on bi different videos here, but very important. I'm going to do one video on genetics. It's a fact. Medical doctors are lost in that world. It's easy to understand genetics. But my genetic memories is how I perform as a cell or how I don't perform for you. And it's memories. It's not me as a cell. It's my memories. Just like you. you your life is based upon your memories from your childhood, your church or synagogue or your Buddhism or whatever uh, spiritual path you're on. Uh, whatever your community thinks, your, your patriotism, all this uh, brainwashing we go through. Uh, a lot of times our belief systems are based upon all false uh, propaganda. And it's until you grow up and you get out into life and you experience life do you learn better a lot of times. A lot of times we respond not with knowledge but from our belief systems. That's genetics in a sense. And same with, with cells. My expertise is in genetic remembering of cells. And one day I will do a video on uh, quantum physics and, and advanced uh, consciousness and